Welcome back to the Film Fiend Podcast. I'm excited to be here back with you, Miguel. Yep. We may have a third uh, host coming in shortly, but for now, we have a... Uh, some sad news. Some sad news. An unfortunate, you know, an unfortunate loss. And, uh, you know, the news just broke right before we went on and really killed the mood. Yeah, it did. We had just had a good time. We beat Gears 4. We beat Gears 4. In record time. Record time. Only to go on Instagram and see that our brother, the man from across the pond, Tom Holland, yep, is apparently out, not out of he, Spider-Man, but, but out of the MCU. But Spider-Man is <laughs> reportedly out of the MCU. What the hell? <sighs> Spider-Man's gone. Apparently, Sony and uh, Marvel couldn't reach terms financially to keep this deal going, and... I am a bit shocked. I'm pretty shocked. Yeah. I thought that we were in good standing. I mean, they've made more money with Spider-Man now than they ever have before. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that Marvel still gets merchandising rights. I would assume is, so. I mean, no, I think that's part of the deal. Oh. I think that Sony only has film rights. Yeah. Um, And I'm just, I can't believe they did this. And this is the most Sony move I've ever heard. Of course. And to be yeah. honest, I'm sick and tired of Sony. Because their film franchise is just, it's plummets. It plummets, and they don't know how to handle it. And you can see with Venom, sure, it made some money, but I think a lot of people saw that movie and are not going to be as interested in the second time around, Mm -hmm. like myself. Am I going to see it? Yes, but that's because I do this kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm not going to be excited to see Venom 2. I know Woody Harrelson's in it, Tom Hardy's in it, Michelle Williams is in it, directed by the man, uh... Andy Serkis, Mm -hmm. you put that together and I should be like begging to see this movie. I should be getting my tickets in advance. I should be getting three tickets at a time, just like over the moon about it. And I'm not going to be. Yeah. Because that first movie was so bad. I still haven't seen it. You still haven't (laughs) seen it. I didn't have fun with it. I thought that the dialogue was terrible, it was inconsistent. And I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm not like some just Disney you know, Disney shill or whatever. I, I love Batman v Superman. I love Wonder Woman to death. Yeah. I watch that movie all the time. Yes, you do. Aquaman's great. I love Aquaman. But it's just Venom was bad. And, like, they're just doing this because they got I, – I know it, man. It's because they, Sony likes to ruin trilogies. They got excited over Venom making a little bit of change, and now they're thinking, now you know what? We don't need Marvel. We're just going to do this on our own and build our own Spider-Man universe. And it's not going to work because they don't have Kevin Feige. And I'm not saying yeah. that it's impossible. I but suppose it's possible that it works. But their track record has shown. Otherwise. Otherwise. They're going to try and do Venom 2. And then the next movie is going to be Sinister 8. <laughs> it's not even going to be Sinister 6. It's going to be like, I don't know. Let's just say they're going to, let's see, we got uh, Carnage is going to be in there. Venom is going to be in there. They're going to bring back... Uh, Sorry for spoilers, but Mysterio, yeah, he's going to come back. They're going to bring um, the Vulture and the Scorpion and the Rhino Paul Giamatti's going to come back over. <laughs> it's, oh. Uh, and I don't want this Spider-Verse movie with, no. with Andrew Garfield and, and Toby Maguire. Maguire. I would hate that. I, it, would, it would drag look, Tom Holland's Spider-Man through the dirt. Yes, it would. And it's... It's just, it really does make me sick. I know they have the rights to it, and I know it's within their, it's just, why, you know? Why do you have to take this good why thing? Why do you have to ruin a good thing? And we had we had Deadpool coming over to the MCU, which we'll touch on a bit later, and everybody's always wanted Spider-Man and Deadpool to interact, and we finally had that happening. And I was about to talk about that on the podcast today about, you know, the possibilities of how they would come together. And now that's out the window. Yeah. Yeah. Which is... It's a darn shame. It hurts. You know? Yeah. It hurts. It's like... I mean, the the thing is, too, that... So they're going to continue this film franchise in this trilogy. Mm-hmm. And it's going to feel so empty. Yeah. Because it's just going to be Spider-Man. They, they can't they, reference nope, anyone. They can't reference anybody in the MCU... They they're just gonna you know what they're gonna do it's just gonna be Spider Man and Venom, yeah, butting heads and then joining forces to fight the Sandman, or freaking Carnage 
That's what it's good. I feel like Sony knew this all along. They were just trying to get springboarded off the MCU. Is is Tom Holland's contract with Sony or Marvel? It's with Sony. It has to be with Sony. It is because they own Spider-Man. And it wouldn't matter if his contract was with Marvel. There's nothing they could do with him. What? If his contract no, was with Marvel. But that would mean they can't run Tom Holland no, through the dirt if can. it was with Marvel. Yep, they can. My only saving grace, possibly, is that they can get John Watts back. And I don't see why he wouldn't. Mm-hmm. The guy directed both uh, Homecoming and yeah. Far From Home. But even so, like, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with his work pre-Spider-Man. And I know that, obviously, there's a lot of guidance in terms of where the story needs to go and what needs to hit, you know. Yeah. And I think that John Watts, if they bring him back, would be the smartest move they can do. And... I mean, he already has two movies under his belt under the Marvel logo, Mm -hmm. and he has all that, you know, collaborative work with Kevin Feige. So hopefully he retains some of that and he can implement it into the next film. Yeah. But I just... You know, it really hurts. Hmm. We're probably not going to find out what happens with that cliffhanger at the end of Far From Home. Yeah, we will. We will? We will. That's still going to hold for sure. They're going to build off of that. That's going to be the big story, I'm sure, in the third film. But what if it was more connected to, like, some Avengers-level stuff? I mean, it's not, though. It's just like a... a, That's like a... I mean, it could be, I suppose, but I just think that's a personal story. Like, how Spider-Man, you know, navigate the world when everybody's unsure about him. His relationship with Mary Jane, is she sure that Mm -hmm. he didn't do it or not? Yeah. Does she think she's playing him? I think it's all pretty tight-knit into his own world still. Um, but unfortunately, he's not an Avenger anymore. No. Say that. Tony made an event, him an Avenger. Sony made him not an Avenger. Yep. And they were clearly building under the impression that he'd be around because he was yeah. meant to spearhead the MCU as the new lead, you know, yeah. the lead alongside yeah. others. But on Earth, he was kind of meant to be the next Tony Stark. That's exactly what they set up. This sours my taste on Far From Home. I love Far From Home, mm-hmm. but I don't think I'm going to be able to watch it the same. You know, yeah. with that big, you know, the ending with him and them playing the music and, you know, him building the suit. It's just going to make me sad. It's not. Yeah. Gonna, I'm not going to be able to, like, really enjoy it like I used to because I know that it's not leading to where the promise was. Mm-hmm. And it's unfortunate, you know. The other thing that I'll say is that when you look at when you look at these movies, now this opens up a new a new thing. Who's the new lead Avenger? Because that was the whole trajectory in Far From Home. Yeah. Is he didn't want to be it. He didn't know what he wanted. He was still trying to get over Tony. And now who's the lead Avenger? Now I want to give a couple votes, you know, a couple options here. Now, I think that the first clear choice for me personally. It's the Black Panther. Yeah. I think yeah. the Black Panther makes sense because he rules Wakanda, mm-hmm. which, yes, but they're, they're you know, expanding to help the world as a whole. Yeah. And, you know, Tony always talks about the suit of armor around, around the, the world. world. He can do that. Yeah. With vibranium. He can do it better. <laughs> like, literally what they did with Wakanda, just, just big. <laughs> around the whole globe. Why not? You know? Yeah. And they really could. He could... Well, and it's not him, it's Shuri, I get that. And I think Shuri's obviously, she's a huge part of Black Panther. A small part of Endgame, same with Mm T'Challa. And I think she will have a bigger role going forward in the MCU as a whole. Yeah. But I think that T'Challa and Shuri together, I think, can be a great one-two punch Mm -hmm. um, to sort of... And that's the thing, I don't know if they'll lead the Avengers per se. It could be Captain Marvel. I don't see her as that. I see her more of like the galactic help that comes in when... You know, when it gets real. Yeah. And I do think that there's going to be I don't think that we'll see another Avengers movie too soon. I think that it's going to be at least three, three to four years. I think it'll be five. Five. Man. I think there's a chance. Probably four. You're right. It could be four. Five does seem too long. But because I think that we're going to build towards an X-Men movie that serves the same as an Avengers film, mm-hmm. because I, I don't think we're getting an X-Men movie off the bat. I think we're getting like a Cyclops and Jean Grey Something of that nature. Okay. Or like a Professor X film. 
and I think we'll probably get two or three X Men related films that lead up to an X Men movie. You know, mm-hmm. and I could be wrong on that, but um, I also think that you know Captain Marvel could cross over with the Guardians some more, or mm-hmm. Thor directly. Yeah, um, Doctor Strange, of course. Doctor Strange could lead the Avengers. It'd be a different choice, but he's strong and. You know, it seems like he kind of knows what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, he's got to hold on things. Again, protector of the realm, but, you know, yeah. Earth realm. <laughs> is there any... Because I do have a pick that is definitely a wild card, but it's the pick that I think makes the most sense to me, even though I, I don't know... As a wild card? Yeah, but go ahead and give... Do you have a pick? I mean, my pick was going to be Black Panther. Okay. But if I could have a second pick, I mean, it's tough. But since they didn't give him the shield, I'll go Bucky. <laughs> oh, no chance. <laughs> I forgot Sam Wilson, man. There's, there's a chance. Yeah. I mean, I think he'll be a pillar for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, he's got the Falcon suit and the shield. Yeah. I need to go get the yeah, door. Yeah, can you go get the door for yeah, me? Yeah, keep talking. Um, I am going to talk. That. So I'm going to leave. <laughs> Thanks. It wow. wasn't a bad Just turn the thing down. Have you felt it? Thanks. Um, but no, I do have a wild card, and I want to wait for them to both get back here. Um, but this is something that I don't think a lot of people are thinking about. When you think about the original Avengers team and who coined the phrase Avengers Assemble, it's someone that has sort of recently gotten the chance to shine in the MCU, but hasn't gotten that big spotlight yet in the big ensemble pieces. And I'm going to wait for them to come in here. They're coming back. I'd like to welcome back to the studio young young Miguel. It's been a long time, Miguel. And as he's back, he's as he lives and breathes, the one, the only... G. <laughs> Do you got him on camera? G, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you're about to be. Yeah. Take a seat. Yeah, trust me. You're all you're all in frame. You know, we we we're working we, out. We've, the we've been workshopping this. Right now we were just talking about Spider Man and our disappointment. <laughs> disappointment, dismay in general. Uh and yeah, if you could just scoot in a little, however much you guys want to do. Yeah, uh, perfect. So I was just about to pick. We were talking about Spider Man and how he's out of the MCU and all of that stuff. And now we're talking about, you know, who's going to lead the Avengers because it was very set up that that was going to be his role, the lead Avenger, quote unquote, you know? And here's my wild card pitch. We said we both agreed that Black Panther is a clear choice. I think Sam Wilson's going to be a pillar. And, you know, Captain Marvel could be you know, the cosmic side of the Avengers as far as leadership. But my 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 pick that's not necessarily going to be talked about is the Wasp. I think Ant-Man and the Wasp would be wonderful to lead the team. Guidance of Hank Pym, someone who was always sort of a pillar in S.H.I.E.L.D., but then left because, you know, he was trying to be used by Howard and all those different things. I think that it's a different perspective. She's definitely one of the most intelligent people in the Avengers even if she hasn't gotten the time to shine, you know? And she did name in the Wasp, don't get me wrong. Um, but she, the Wasp coined the term, you know, Avengers Assemble. And I think that it would be fitting. I think if you have that one-two punch, it's great. You keep the, you know, the humor aspect of the Avengers films at its heart. Um, I think Evangeline Lilly can certainly add a lot of levity to scenes. She does very well in dramatic um, situations. And that is my wild card pick as the new leader of the Avengers. So the question is, who you think would be a good leader of yeah. the Avengers now? Yeah, since Spider-Man's out. Mm, yeah, it's kind of been put on the spot here and just thinking about all these names you just shot out. Black Panther, you know, he's doing his thing, you know, but, you know, he's a king, man. He's, yeah. got, he's got Wakanda to worry about. Fair. But at the end of Black Panther 2, the whole thing was them branching out to help the entire world with what they have. Also, my point I made earlier is that Tony Stark's whole thing was always about putting an, a suit of armor around the world. Black Panther and Shuri, you know, with the help of Shuri, has the ability to literally do that 
with the same tech they used to protect Wakanda just around the entire globe. Man, you know that was a PR stunt. <laughs> <laughs> that was like Look, they only gonna, went to Oakland. They're gonna bring, <laughs> they're gonna bring some Starbucks in, and they're gonna put some shields out. Now, why would they want some Starbucks? Because remember, they're Wakanda. Yeah, but uh, Okoye wanted some Starbucks. Who doesn't want some Starbucks? Exactly. Honestly. I don't even drink coffee, and you know what? I want some Starbucks. You get that hot chocolate. No, you get that chocolate milk, don't you? Chocolate milk. No, I get hot chocolate. You get hot chocolate in yeah. the 115 degree weather. Yes, sir. That's right. You weirdo. Hey, <laughs> don't hate on it, all right? <laughs> it's my weight loss technique. You know, you sweat a little extra. <laughs> Boy, you just sweat in general. <laughs> look, look, we have more to talk about than the MCU, and I didn't know I was here to get disrespected. Evangeline Lilly? Yeah, the wasp. I would, I would very much like that choice. Yeah, right, because she does seem like she naturally has that sort of um, um, desire to lead. Yeah, I, I'd say, yeah, give her more. Yeah, and then she's great. She's a great actor, and super I would want committed. her. Yeah, I would want her to. Yeah, exactly. Super committed too. You know, and I would just want her to. You know, you know, get more screen time. You know, same. Just let her do her thing. And I know, yeah, thinking about Captain Marvel, you know, she's off world. She has a whole, what, universe? I don't know how far. Galaxy. Her, yeah, range goes. She has all that to take care of. Guardians doing their thing. And then, what, Thor doing his thing. And then yeah. uh, Valkyrie, ruler of Asgard now. So so the prophecy says. And, and Hulk <laughs> is just, I don't know, he's just doing his thing. Yeah, he's just dabbing and signing autographs. What do they call him? What's, what's he called now? Professor Hulk? Well... That's in the comics, but he's just, oh. he's still Bruce. But yeah, I like all those names you throw out. He's Spruce Banner. <laughs> did you just say Spruce Banner? I did. <sighs> because but of that comment, next leader is Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> what about um Howard? Ben? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Did you hear the Russo said that the Nova duck. is in the film? They, c- they emailed after and said that was 1,000% a joke. Damn it. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, they, I was searching they yesterday. Out, <laughs> they came out after. I was like, just to clarify, we were joking. Dude, I was searching the whole... I was <laughs> freeze framing and searching yeah, for it. Yeah, they did the, uh, the like, Roos- the Avengers support on Twitter. You know how everyone... They do that. And someone tweeted and was like, why, why were there no Nova Corps members in the big climatic fight? And they said, he was there. Yeah, but he was there. Like they didn't. Yeah, as Nova in, Cor- look, Nova, Nova is dead. They are gone. Oh yeah, Nova Corps gone. They got decimated. Yeah. They're, they're 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 done. done. They did not get snapped away. No, they he, got. Yeah, he messed them up. He he blew up the planet. But look, there's more to talk about on the <laughs> show. I have a bunch of topics actually, and I was talking I was talking about how we'd get to Deadpool later, and might as well get to that yeah. now. Yeah, we were saying how it's so unfair. I was I had planned on coming on this show. And talking about how Deadpool is going to get integrated into the MCU and how that's awesome because we can finally get that Deadpool Spidey interaction just for us to get ready and see that that's not possible anymore. And my comment was a soul for a soul. It sucks. But basically, the, uh, and this is where it, it really gets interesting to me the director of Deadpool 2, um, he put, I think it was on Twitter, he said this whole thing about how. It seems like a primer to get people warmed up to the thought, you know. He's saying how, you know, the next Deadpool movie could be fine as PG-13. I'm paraphrasing here. But, you know, he's probably going to get integrated into the MCU, and Kevin Feige is sort of looking over the character now. And I actually don't mind because where I loved Deadpool 1 the first time I saw it, Mm -hmm. each time I watched it, I just sort of, it d- it loses its luster and shine for me. Mm-hmm. And Deadpool 2, I thought was okay, first watch. I love Ryan Reynolds as a character. I love a lot of the casting. Um, I just, I don't hold it that dear to me. Mm-hmm. And I do much prefer movies that have, like, legitimate stakes that I care about. Whereas in Deadpool, I just, and I know it had stakes, I just didn't really care because of how comedic it is, you know? Yeah. It kind of puts you in a mood and that's fine it's different things i don't want everything to be the same but um we're pretty much guaranteeing that deadpool for the most part i'm pretty sure he's gonna be in the mcu cool just gonna be weird seeing you know having him to not make a lot of the 
jokes he makes. I think that, the, but the thing with that is, I think Ryan Reynolds is funny enough. Oh no, one hundred percent, Ryan Reynolds can do it. Yeah, and he's still gonna make us laugh just fine. These jokes I'm saying are gonna be a lot more inventive than before. Yeah, I agree. Because <laughs> they're gonna have to play with that that PG thirteen boundary, and they're they're gonna they're gonna get close to that line. Yeah, I think so. On a, on certain instances as well. No, it, it's not gonna be used for at least a movie. I don't know. I was gonna. That's what I was gonna bring up next. I was gonna ask if you guys think we will get it. I think it won't be in his first movie that he's in. Like he'll pro- if he's not introduced into the MCU in a solo movie. Yeah, he won't be. I'm sure. That well, his he first appearance. If his first appearance is in a solo Deadpool movie, yeah, the F word won't be used. I'm just I'm calling. Also, it. I do. I do or see someone them, else is gonna, I gonna use say it. That. I do see them using that gag, where the whole movie it's like he keeps getting into dialogue situations where you think he's gonna use it. He keeps waiting and waiting and waiting and then. You know, who is going to use it? Uh, Hulk. <laughs> well, I would say Spider-Man, but we're not getting that. <laughs> yeah, we're not. So who do you think's going to steal it from him? Uh, I, don't know, I remember, in, what was it, in Civil War, when uh, Ant-Man became huge, and then Spider-Man. Oh, uh, yeah. They used, yeah. Well, was that the one S word they used in that? Well, I, think so. I mean, they can say that. Yeah. As much as they one, well, they can as say as it much. enough. They yeah, there's not. Use yeah, yeah. I was thinking, mm, you know, uh, you know. I was thinking about like these two movies too, and it's like I was, I was gonna ask like, why, why is it that these movies are not as, like, you know, I don't know what the right word you use. You said the word, but I forget. Like, I don't know, you know. I don't know. Just like I'm not as emotionally invested and yeah. I don't feel the stakes as much. Yeah. Because it is a comedy at heart. Yeah, the emotional investment, the stakes, yeah. Like that's why I was like I don't really go back to those movies. I've Same. only seen like Deadpool two like once and that was in theaters and then never went back to it. Just yeah, because the stakes, but I don't know. To answer that question, I don't know. I don't know who would uh I can I'd tell see you who's not gonna route. use it. It's gonna be Cap. Cap's dead. Language. Well he's he's old. He's d- he's dead. By the time he gets in, by the time Deadpool's in the mix, Cap's dead. Okay, here's what I think happened to Cap. I think that he handed over the shield. They had the little moment, and he was walking back, you know, to his car or whatever. And you know, th- it's a whole lake. It's a pond. He slipped, fell in the water. Ironically, once again, like in every single Cap movie, he falls in a body of water. But this time, he didn't come out. That's dark. Yep. <laughs> Not because he couldn't. Because he thought it was his time. <laughs> That's dark, and man. I don't That's know. That's awful. That's probably not what happened. But he. So who do you think steals? The I told F-word? you, man. No. It's gonna be Hulk. Oh, it's gonna be Hulk. No, it's not. No, gonna be Hulk. no it's not. Gonna <laughs> be I don't Hulk. even know if we're gonna really have Hulk much more. Yeah, he's, probably. He's not. still gonna be a presence probably every once in a while. I think we're gonna get a She Hulk. Um, mm. although that might be their TV series that they're doing on ABC, perhaps. Um, but. Yeah, that's enough Marvel talk. We we've gone over Marvel enough. You hear the Matrix Four is happening officially, and Keanu yeah. Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss are both coming back. I'll pass the mic to you. Yeah, Miguel's never seen any of them. You should see the first. You're a fan of Keanu, right? Everybody's a fan of Keanu. So <laughs> here's the thing. Gee, do you think this is a good idea? Wachowskis are coming back, or at least one of them, to write it and direct. Um. I don't know. What's the story to tell? Because the last two stories we had, especially the last, I have no idea what happened. I still don't know. You're telling me that the man sitting next to me to my left yeah. has not seen the first Matrix Look, movie. here's the thing. We can, <laughs> we've done a whole thing where we can make an entire podcast about what this man has not seen. Oh. <laughs> He's never seen a Terminator movie. He's never seen a Matrix movie. Have you ever seen a Die Hard? Yes. Have you ever seen a Rambo? No. <laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was just trying to remember. Yeah, it's the first movie that you know. Pe- I forget. I forget what the you know the audience's consensus is on on the second one. I forget what eh. they're called too. Like reloaded. Third one is what revelation? I think it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> the third one is such a 
<laughs> oh my! I don't goodness. remember because I don't remember this. I slightly remember the. Remember, ending. it's like the big battle. They're going. They're in the catacombs or whatever, and they got the big machine shooting. Oh Gatling guns yeah, and, they were. Oh, yeah, and they're yeah, partying okay. in the cave. Yeah. Like it's 1999. Yeah, I've. To- yeah. Matrix Three is Matrix Revolutions. Okay, exactly. Exactly. That's uh, that's. I have no like, Miguel. I wish. No, I don't wish, but even if I was really, like, mad at you and I felt like spoiling a movie, which is my biggest number one sin, I don't know how I would spoil Matrix 3 because I don't understand it. (laughs) I've even watched videos online and I still don't understand it. Nobody does. You can watch one video that says, like, Matrix 3 explained. It's like a 35-minute video. Watch another one. Completely different take. Well, I'm also, Lawrence Fishburne needs to be in this, right? I would assume. I don't. I don't remember what happened to him, but I think he's okay. I don't remember, but forget his name. What's his name? Uh, Morpheus. Morpheus. Yeah. Morph. But I'm excited for this. This, you know, like this whole with all this whole resurgence of you know Keanu. Yeah, and all these Keanu Sans. Yeah, that. He's you know I'm I'm just wanting to see him more on screen. Like he's great, and especially like you know, reprising the role, and hopefully like <laughs> we. Uh, I don't. Well, wait. Well. So Neo. is this a sequel? Or yeah, what it's okay. it's number four. <laughs> okay, now that that could raise some eyebrows. Exactly. My that's my question. Like, like I was honestly, and I love Keanu, but I was more excited when we had that idea of Michael B. Jordan stepping in as a young Morpheus or or Morpheus's kid or something because I just want them to go in a different direction because yeah. it seems like every time that they've tried to make a new story, it just has not panned out. And I'm hoping since it's been so long since number three. They've had enough time to cook something up that's, you know, interesting. But I have a feeling that that's what they tried to do before. And interesting just turns into weird and, you know, convoluted. Yeah. So my excitement is tempered. But we'll see. With I'm really pretty much banking on the first trailer. Now, I don't remember their last project, though, Wachowski. Uh, I can look it up, but I don't think it's anything to... Uh, yeah. Yeah, but... Uh, I'm not even going to look it up. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> but look, the Wachowskis, we'll see. We'll see. The jury is out. I'm not writing them out completely. I just, I want to see a trailer. I do want to hear a synopsis. And we probably won't get that for like two years. Yeah. This movie probably won't come out for three. <laughs> um, If it ever comes out, you know. Yeah. Because we've heard these rumblings before. But there is something else. Bond 25 has officially got a title. Did you see that video? Wait a second. Another. Guess what Miguel's never seen. You know, I think I'm just going to switch chairs with G. (laughs) Let him finish out the podcast because the rest of these top Bond film. I mean, at least not the Daniel Craig ones. Perfectly balanced. This whole thing should be. I think it is. Scrooge no, this, McDuck. This <laughs> that was that was Thanos. <laughs> but um you know, did you <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm just gonna <laughs> It's okay. Did you see the title, G? I did. I didn't see It's a very Bond title, I like it. What do they got? Bond twenty five. No time to die. No, I get yeah, very, very you know, I'm satisfied with that. Very Bond esque. Yeah. It just makes me think. <laughs> Bond twenty five. Uh Oh my goodness. <laughs> I choked. What's that title? Um e- oh <laughs> Bond twenty five, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Okay. That's enough of that. Have you seen that, Miguel? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm just seeing this logo reveal for the first time and you know, knowing this is his last last movie, right? Yeah, last yeah. foray into the Bond universe. I forget is it the same uh, same director? Was the director this Yeah. This one? Forgot. But see that's the thing. He directed Skyfall. Oh, yeah. we And Spectre. Right? <laughs> he directed Spectre. So you're telling me this man, again, to my left, ladies and gentlemen, has not seen Casino Royale. Nope. And Skyfall of all Skyfall. And, we, you know, when we are, whenever we talk about Bond, I know we always talk about who's doing that opening. Uh, that opening oh, the song. song, the Bond song. You know, yeah. I remember we throw out, some, throw out a few names out there. Also, I know this isn't necessarily related. Um, but I've heard, like, I've heard people say they want Ed Sheeran to do a Bond song. I think that, no, thank you. No, thank you. No. But I was, uh, <laughs> I was at work and 
I forget what the conversation was, but someone brought up like, oh, that's like, oh, we should have Michael Jackson sing that. And I'm like, no, we don't, we don't do that anymore. It's like, oh, then who's the Michael Jackson of this generation? Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I was like, what <laughs> are you talking about? That's nuts. <laughs> oh, man. Man, I... I'm going to look directly into the camera and do something I do to Eli all the time when I hear him say some something like that. Yeah. Ed Sheeran. I think that's the appropriate response for this. Bond song, you know, I say... Uh, Just get Adele again. Like she... Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, Oscar Skyfall, winning, man. Os- Skyfall. Just her voice. The song is it perfect. right. And it, yeah, it is. Like, what's yeah? What's wrong with having her again? There's nothing. Did wrong they? With that. I will say that. Like a different song. Did they do Sia yet? No, they didn't. I I feel like that's the ne- the next step. I feel like if they're not gonna get Adele back, I'd be cool with Sia, um, depending on how she delivers. You know, I think I think that would be fine. Obviously, Adele's number one choice. Oh, but wait, didn't we? Uh, weren't there other characters that were gonna make a role? What's uh? I forget. I didn't see Spectre. Blofeld. So, yeah, that guy. Yeah. Who played by Christoph Waltz. Yeah. That guy is making a return. Yippee. So uh, I don't know. I'm sure it's going to be a small role. You know, I just don't really care because I thought he was really bad in the movie. Bad role, bad performance compared to what he can do. And I don't think that's all his fault, but I just don't know if he really cared about that dialogue. <laughs> um, it was really stereotypical. And with Dylan. What uh, do you think is going to happen to the Bond in this one, at the end at least? Do you think he's going to walk away from this one? No. <laughs> you know, actually, I he's going to so. ride off into the sunset on a sailboat. Because Daniel Craig was so hesitant to even come back. I feel like he's on that Han Solo grind right now where he's <laughs> like, you got to kill me. <laughs> no <laughs> chance I'm coming <laughs> back for 26. Kill <laughs> Just kill me. <laughs> Yeah, because I remember him like in an interview talking about the you know the injuries he sustained playing yeah. playing him and he's, just, he's done. Yeah, and you know they have that other girl that's been cast as a new 007 in the film. Oh yeah, and I think that's ending here. I don't think that that carries on to the next. I don't think she's named the new James Bond. You know, mm-hmm. I do think we'll get a new casting, and this just this you know run of Bond ends. All the characters are done, and I think that's okay. Um, but yeah, this is it. I I think he definitely might die. I'll probably give it thirty five percent. Then he dies. Man, like but 35? I'm yeah. I'm really digging the title though. That's yeah. a great title. No time to die. Better than Spectre. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Spectre. No time to die. He's definitely dead. <laughs> Casino Royale was an awesome name. Title, yeah. Quantum of Solace is awesome name, even though the movie's not. Um. Uh. But you know, uh, uh, how much can we get from a title? Yeah. It's exciting. It's coming. We do have some other news. Not necessarily movie news, but this is my show, so I can integrate whatever the hell I want. And that is because I love Kevin Smith. And did you hear the news about him announced at uh, some convention? I forget which one it was. I watched the panel. PowerCon, I think. He no is clue. show running a Masters of the Universe animated show, um, anime style, from the same people who did Castlevania on Netflix, which I think is fantastic. Uh, of course, Mark Bernardin is writing on it. Of with, course. Um, among others. I mean, come on. This is podcast partner. I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> you need to watch Fat Man Beyond. It's awesome. And I hope we can go to a show someday. But it's exciting, you know? Apparently, it's going to take off right as, you know, the 80s show ended, mm-hmm. which I've seen. I remember watching Boomerang back in the day. Oh, yeah. And I've seen a lot of the episodes. But I don't have the context of the story very well. Uh-huh. Like, you know, you'd see episodes in the morning, but they weren't always in order. Like, they didn't run them yeah. serially. And it was just sort of here and there we'd see them. And I had, I do have fond memories of the show. And Kevin Smith references Masters of the Universe a lot, so I think that's clear why they went for him. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited to see it. Yeah. Um, during the panel, though, it cracked me up because, you know, he announced what they were doing, and everybody's going crazy. He's like, hold on, everybody. I did make yoga hosers, so temper your expectations. <laughs> we'll see how it is when it comes out. Um, but I think it's pretty cool, man. Is this something you're interested in? Yeah. Are I you like gonna me watch? some cartoons. Yeah, right? <laughs> what about you, G? Does this pique your interest? Yeah, just, you know, seeing some of the, you know, I haven't seen too many of his uh, movies and stuff, so I haven't been too much into yeah. the Kevin Smith lore, but I know he's, you know, I've seen that, what is that thing that's coming out that he's making? 
Jay and Silent Bob reboot? Yeah, that. You know, I think we saw a trailer to it. Yeah. I was, yeah, I loved, I loved the trailer. I loved the content of it. You know, I'm excited to, you know, um, you know, enter the lore that is Kevin Smith. And, and, and you know, I haven't seen Castlevania, but I know their, you know, their style is very nice. And yeah. I heard the anime is good too. So. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm excited over I'm it. Exci- I'm, I'll watch this. I'm just excited to see what this is. I don't know anything about it, but. And he said everybody's back, you know, Skeletor, He-Man. Oh, okay, then. It's, it's those people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely watch it. Then. <laughs> um, also, what does this do for the movie? Because it is announced that Noah Centennial is playing the new Master of the Universe He-Man in the reboot that's coming live action film. I wasn't on board with him until I, I didn't really know who he was. And I'll be honest, he kind of fits. Wow, I this man hasn't seen to all the boys I've loved. I have before. now. I have now. And on that's Netflix. Yeah, he Do you live under a rock? Hey. <laughs> um It's me again. I very sparingly use Netflix. Like I just watched the first thing on Netflix I've watched in a while and that was the Invader Zim movie. Oh, it's on Netflix? Was, yeah, it's on Netflix. Oh. Netflix exclusive basically. How long is it? An hour. Okay. It's so good. I'll it's watch so it. good. <laughs> it made me really want just Invader Zim to come back, but I know it's not gonna happen. Cause nope, that that was the series ender. Yep, like there's nowhere they can really go with it now. Yep, that's the that was the plan yeah. of it. Yeah, I know, but like it just I wish there's nowhere they want to go with it now. <laughs> I think they felt very no, lucky they, they wanted to go like they wanted to keep making it. But, yeah, you know, everybody Nick, wants to. Nick was but I'm like, saying, hey, no, they. I'm sure they're grateful that they got oh, to do this. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, and I'm glad they did because like it was a it was a really good ending. Yeah. Um, one more. <laughs> here's the here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Master of the Universe is coming. Yes, it is. We're gonna watch it? Probably, yeah. I'm gonna watch it. You're gonna watch it for, for sure. sure. And that's that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see Kevin Smith do this. But but again, I have another sad story. <laughs> we started out sad and I think we might end sad, which is kinda sad. But fitting for You're what today sad. has gone through, you know? And that is, I mean, it's maybe it's good for someone, but not for me. <laughs> no disrespect. The guy seems like a good dude. But. And he's he's having a lot of success, and I'm glad to see, you know, different people getting shots in Hollywood. Uh, but <laughs> Henry Golding has been cast as Snake Eyes. And at first, look, <laughs> look, I am not exactly a fan of his work. Seems like a good fellow. I'd call you the opposite of fan of of a fan Look, of his work. I think that thus far you have quite a bit of disdain what I've for seen, this man's work. Well, look, here's the thing. I've seen him in Crazy Rich Asians and I've seen him in that Anna Kendrick movie. Um and I think that he adds very little to both. And I would even say he retracts from both. <laughs> Whereas wow. I think Constance Wu is the other lead in Crazy Rich Asians. Phenomenal. I okay. loved her in that movie. Still haven't seen it. Okay, but here's the thing. <laughs> Like, I feel like he amplifies how good she is because she's so dull. He's so dull in these movies. Okay. And the same thing with the Anna Kendrick movie. It's like it's like you type that dialogue into Google and let it translate it for you. Not translate, but like speak, speak it. it loud. Yeah. Just like in a very monotone robotic voice. He's a very attractive man. I get that. And he's playing Snake Eyes. And I, at first, I was like, Snake Eyes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't say a word. He just acts. He seems like a pretty physical fellow. But I'm then, sure. but then I found out it's like a, you know, origin origin story. Why doesn't Snake Eyes talk? All that kind of stuff. Is he gonna have his tongue snatched out of his mouth? We're gonna find out. I'm sure it's gonna happen. But what if it doesn't happen till movie three? <laughs> what if the whole movie? It's like a trilogy of Snake Eyes. So they're just soft rebooting the GI Joe franchise. <laughs> Yeah, and I think this is smarter. Lead off with Snake Eyes, you know. And then can we get that promised Transformers G.I. Joe mashup? I think that's what we're leading to. I don't want it. I do. I do want it. I don't. I really don't. I think, check this out. Okay. Cybertron. Needs I do not <laughs> want the G.I. Joes to go to Cybertron, so help me God. <laughs> Optimus, <laughs> Optimus is coming back to the homeland. And uh, Megatron's like, 
and Megatron being played by Calvin Johnson this time. Megatron's like, you've come back for some more Knuckles sandwiches. And then Optimus is like, you forget who I am. I can hold six. And the doors open and the G.I. Joes flood. <laughs> and they go. <laughs> because there's giant freaking robots everywhere and they're going to get smacked. Snake Eye is going to be hitting Euro steps, dodging all these bullets, and then he's going to cut... Uh, 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 Cut the check. He's going to take out Megatron in one slice. No, the death of a thousand cuts. He's just... <laughs> done. <laughs> and he's going to wait. Last cut going to the Achilles tendon. Pizza time. Exactly. That's what he's going to say. He's going to serve a slice right to his throat. Why, did I, I, why <laughs> didn't I use that when we were talking about Spider-Man? <laughs> and that is my goal. But... You know, I want to stop your goals. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that this is the right move, starting with the Snake Eyes film. Yeah. Uh, you know, get people... Same thing with Transformers, you know? They've taken the same approach, which does show me that they have, you know, someone intelligent behind the studio, finally, at Hasbro, mm-hmm. leading off with an individual film. And I think that they are finally... People are taking notes from from the MCU. You know, the Dude, Dark Universe yeah. screwed it. Yeah. DC screwed up. And... Now they're like, okay, wait a minute. How did they start this? They said, hold up. Individual films make good stories that we care about. They're like, what? We got to make a good story? <laughs> yeah, and make a what? couple of them, <laughs> then team up. We don't just throw everyone together and like write it in half an hour with about, I don't know, two hours of sleep? Exactly, no. <laughs> and and that's the deal. So and That's the way the cookie crumbles. Let me ask you something. The snake eyes get you out of bed in the morning. No. Well, that's going to be the show. <laughs> so, uh, Mikey, if you will lead us out, I just want to thank everybody for listening yeah, today. Nice. I had a, a great time on the show, even though I was really sad. Follow us at Phantom of Movies. Follow us on YouTube at Phantom of Movies. Mm-hmm. And we will see you next time. Goodbye.